Hey y'all, I'm Donna. And I'm Carrie. And we are Paranormal Chicks. Sinister Sightings? Episode 1. Ooh, I'm so excited about Me this one. Me too. Oh my god. This is where you send us your stories. And we read them. We butcher them. I am not a good out loud reader or in my head reader. <laughs> And we haven't read these beforehand, so... Get ready for some stumbling over your words. You know, because we really are those people. I'm speaking for Carrie because I'm pretty sure she's the same. But, like, in school when people would be like, all right, we're going to read out loud, you would, like, count the people before you Mm -hmm. and then count, like, the paragraphs and then start reading your paragraph, like, trying to get ahead. Would have no clue what the story was because I'm reading my paragraph. Yes. (laughs) Panicked that I have to read out loud. Oh, my gosh. In college, I took uh, Old Testament. Mm Mm-hmm. And he would make us do that. Do you know how many weird names begot another weird name oh, begot another weird name? Oh, there's like a whole chapter in, what is it, Exodus? And I was like, God, oh, God. But you don't, literally, oh, God. But <laughs> but you don't want to be the, like, the dunce that doesn't know the biblical names when you're in the Old Testament. You know, like. Why did y'all I, just have to read it, though? That's weird. Oh, well, we read it, and then we would discuss it oh. and all that. But, like. Read it on your own time and then come in and be prepared yes. to discuss. That's college class. Right. Okay, you want to go first? Ooh, no. (laughs) Oh, I'm nervous. Do you want me to go first? No, I'll go first. Okay. (laughs) I'm going to pop this cherry. Get it, girl. Carrie can uh, tie a knot with a cherry stem with her tongue. Why is she still single, people? I mean, get in line, fellas. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Okay, so this one is from Wanima. She's in our private Facebook group. Love her. She actually follows us on Instagram and Twitter. Woohoo! So shout out. And she's like all about Twitter. I see like things that she's liked. We follow almost the same people, I feel like. I'm so glad that you do that because Twitter makes no fucking sense <laughs> me to me. neither. Wanima, help me out, girl. Okay, so this is titled Crazy Haunted Shit. Hey, ladies. So here's my story about my haunted workplace. Legend has it that several people died while they were building this building back in the 60s. When I worked on a team, sometimes I would feel a presence, usually someone walking past me when there wasn't anyone actually walking by. Oh, my gosh. What if she got crop dusted and it was nothing? Like Marley just did me? (laughs) Okay. She said that happened quite frequently. One time I felt a tap on my shoulder. (gasps) I thought it was a coworker because he would walk up behind me and tap my shoulder if he needed help with something. So I whip around thinking it was him, but no one was there. Oh, my God. I was shit my pants. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. Side note, the coworker that would tap me on my shoulder committed suicide last September. <gasps> wow. Oh God, that's so sad. Yes. Or died by suicide. Oh, um, yay with the terminology. Yay, I'm learning. Okay, so she said, I tell some of my coworkers this and they totally believe the place is haunted as well. A couple of months ago, I saw a ghost wearing athletic clothing jogging in the aisle. What the fuck? First of all, I don't jog in this life. Right? Much less in the fucking afterlife. Do you mean that I have to exercise when I die? Fuck that. I don't want to sign up for that. (laughs) It's supposed to be called the good place. (laughs) Maybe that was hell. I don't know. Oh, maybe they were in like purgatory or hell or something. Oh, I do not want to have to jog. Satan, God, they'd be like, do you call that jogging? Quasimodo, pick up the pace. Look, they, I, do you know what my jogging is? Picture it. A turtle (laughs) stuck in molasses. (laughs) That's how fast I run. Oh, God, that's funny. (laughs) I, again, would have shit my pants Watch, seeing a ghost run, walk, float. Oh, for sure. I'd have died. I'd be dead. I don't know how she's writing this email. I'd have had a fucking heart attack. Same. I would have at least shit my pants. Something. Oh, no. She said she did shit her pants. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, my Nima. In another department, a friend said all of the machines were off. She went to the bathroom, and when she came back, a couple of machines were on, and they were spitting out parts. <gasps> oh, my gosh. What? She took pics, and sure as shit, parts were all over the floor. Oh, my God. First of all, fuck you, ghost. I have to clean up your mess now. Right? Well, the ghost is pissed off because it had to jog around. I mean, damn. Oh, my gosh. Okay. 
She said, a little backstory, my company makes electronic components. That particular department that my friend works in makes parts for vehicles, computers, and she's in the medical division. I used to make parts for pacemakers and defibrillators. Now I make parts for people with Parkinson's. (gasps) Cool. Oh, my gosh. I want to know more about that. Yes. I want to know more about all of this, actually. Uh, Yes. And she sent another, like, another story that we'll read uh, on another episode. Awesome. mm -hmm, We got to get more stories, though. But, oh, my God, how freaking cool, though. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, she said, even one of the security guards is convinced that the place is haunted as fuck. It gets particularly scary when you're the only one in the building besides the guard and you keep looking over your shoulder because you can feel a presence. (gasps) So there's my story. I hope you enjoyed it, Wanima. Oh my God. Could you imagine listening to this podcast or Let's Let's Not Not Meet? Meet? Oh God. Or Ghost in the Birds? Any of them. No, No, I couldn't. I couldn't. uh -uh. Especially because Let's Not Meet has the sound effects and stuff. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, so this email is from Sarah, and its uh, title is Not My Proudest Moment. (laughs) Oh, I love it already. I know. (laughs) Ladies. Actually, ladies, because it's in caps. (laughs) This is a story that, well, it's embarrassing as fuck. (laughs) Yes. While in my senior year of college, I landed an internship far away from home, so I had to find a place to live for a few months. Preach. I ended up renting an old crazy farmhouse all by myself in a place called Benton Harbor, Michigan. The basement was so scary that I chose to drive 20 minutes into town to do laundry for weeks until I got a high-powered flashlight, new bulbs, and some sage to cleanse that bitch. (laughs) Oh, my God, girl. I would be doing the same thing. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Oh, my God. The house was set on five wooded acres, and I only had two neighbors, in quotes. Damn, this sounds like the place that you stayed at. She copied my story. Just kidding. (laughs) The first was a little old lady with tons of small children running around during the day, kind of like the little old lady who lives in a shoe. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And that house was like 100 yards away. The second neighbor directly across the street was an actual lumberjack. (laughs) His wife was legit real-life Snow White. Turns out their house was a series of add-ons and started as a family chicken coop erected circa 1937. Holy shit. I'm talking several additions of tin roofing and plywood walls. Needless to say, I stuck out like a sore thumb since I was working <laughs> in, a, in a corporate office. From day one, the house made me extra uncomfortable. But I was lucky enough to get it for relatively cheap, and it was furnished and clean, so I just had to deal with the creepy, which the entire house was creepy. One night, early into my internship, as I tried to quell my this house is absolutely fucking haunted fears... <laughs> <laughs> I turned on the TV and attempted to watch some random spotty cable. Eventually, I decided it would just be smart to go to bed. I brushed my teeth and washed my face, all while hearing scraping sounds <gasps> and jingling from everywhere, which I continued to tell myself was just the pipes. Oh, just the pipes. Shit. Finally, I settled in for what I hoped would be a quick drift into slumber. Right as I reached the in-between sleep and awake state, I heard a dog viciously barking outside my bedroom window Uh -uh. and some pretty intense ticking slash rattling on the glass like someone was trying to pry it open. Holy fuck. No. The window itself was about six feet off the ground, so I figured someone was trying to climb up the side of the house and get in. Oh my God, I had chills. I thought to myself, this is it. This is my survivor story. (laughs) She was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be on. I survived. Look, fight or flight, Sarah was like, I'm fucking fighting. This was also before I had access to the internet. I had no landline, and calling 911 from your cell phone cost about $15. Damn, that is terrible. (laughs) How are you going to pay? Yeah. How are you going to charge to call 911? Yeah. Since I'm a cheap bitch and my dad <laughs> and my dad would have flipped out on me if the phone bill had a fifteen dollar charge on it for quote no good reason. <laughs> oh my god. I, what year was this? Because this next sentence gives me joy. I immediately call my boyfriend free nights and weekends. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh, I gosh. remember those days. Uh-huh. So he was about two hours north, and I told him someone was trying to break in. He called local law enforcement. They called my cell and informed me there was a cop car coming to the house. Oh, my god. That's gosh. a good idea. Call him yeah. to have him call. Dang, Sarah, you're so smart. <laughs> in the meantime, the barking stopped, but there was still a lot of intense rustling outside my window. 
I was a statue in bed for a solid 10 minutes, oh white knuckling a bat I had next to my bed until I saw cop lights roll up the driveway and flashlights flash, flash, <laughs> flash lights searching around the house. I eventually got a call from the cops, not 100% sure why they didn't just knock on the door, <laughs> saying that they didn't see anything suspicious, no fingerprints on the seal or footprints in the yard. However, they did find random... Mostly deflated balloons and a ton of dog fur tangled in the bushes outside my window, which Wait. was incidentally tall enough to tap on the glass of the window when jostled. Oh, my God. Turns out, Snow White <laughs> across the street oh my God. had a wolf dog and it escaped its enclosure that night, came sniffing around my house, freaked out after it got tangled up in the balloons in the bush, and panicked until it broke free. Like, come on, really? Oh my God. Her dad would have been pissed if that would have been $15. The next day, I cut down all the bushes and brush (laughs) from the side of the house and never spoke of it again, LOL. Thank you for reading my tale. Hopefully you find it as entertaining as I do. Love y'all, Sarah. Oh, oh my gosh. My God. I oh my gosh. Cannot even Okay, and Sarah is half of the Homance Chronicles. Yes. So if you thought that was funny, please check their podcast out. <laughs> because these <laughs> this stories, is their podcast. Yes. Yeah. But um, it's mainly with their love life, which is just as funny. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. And she said at the NPS, in case you're looking for some interesting murder stories from middle of nowhere towns, I've included a few links below about the town I was in, which has some pretty interesting history involving murder, racism, sketchy police work, and Al Capone. What? Oh my god. We'll be checking those out. Yes. Thank you, Sarah. I love both of these stories. Both of yes. these girls are amazing writers. Like, Yes, I could see it happening. I, I mean, like, totally painting a picture. I'm, like, enthralled in these stories. Yes. Ooh, I love this. Okay, your turn. I feel like I'm reading Goosebumps again. I feel like it's Christmas Day, and I'm like, okay, I opened my present. Now it's your turn. <laughs> so hurry up so I can go to my turn. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know what? We're like the Midnight Society. From Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yes, because they would, oh you know, share their tales. Oh, my gosh. Bucket list. Check. All we need is that poof, stuff to throw in the fire. Oh, my gosh. And the bucket to put it out. Well, you can use your baby powder. <laughs> Y'all, it's fucking hot outside. <laughs> okay, this story is from Valerie, whoop, whoop, who was like the OG First person in our group. She was. Mm, other than, like, the family that we made go come in. <laughs> yeah, other than the people that we added because you're fucking joining our group. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Valerie. This is titled My Ghost Story. Hey, ladies. Hey. <laughs> hey, girl, hi. I'm going to share with you one of my many ghostly encounters. I briefly mentioned this to Donna in the Facebook group a little while back. It's part urban legend, part personal experience, part actually recorded history. I'm in a book. <gasps> I remember what? her telling me this. Oh, my gosh. Well, like, she didn't go into detail, but I remember her saying that she was actually in a book. Oh, my gosh. In about 2005... Myself, my dad, my stepmom, a male friend of mine whom I will call N, and an 11-year-old family friend whom I will call MK. Michael Kors, you know him? MK. (laughs) Okay, so they all decided to go on a ghost tour. My kind of peeps. Right. There is an old jail in the small town of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, that has a long history of being haunted. It has a long non-haunted history as well, and historically most famous for being the hanging site of several of the alleged Molly McGuire's. Short history, the Molly McGuire's were allegedly a group of coal miners who were trying to fight the mine bosses for better working conditions and wages. Whoa. It's entirely possible that everyone who was tried and hanged were completely innocent, (gasps) and it was the bigotry against the Irish, but that's a whole other essay that very few people would be interested in. Um, I'm interested. No, we are interested. Right? Conspiracies? Yes. Send them to So this jail is supposed to be haunted by the ghost of former inmates. 
One sail has a handprint in the cement wall that was, according to legend, left by a member of the Molly Maguires on his way to the gallows. Oh my gosh. He said something to the effect of, This handprint will remain as a testament to my innocence. And despite many attempts, the jail has reportedly never been able to get rid of it. (gasps) Oh my gosh. Okay. The basement is the old solitary confinement and usually closed to tours. Well, yeah, because that's scary as fuck. (laughs) Though I want to (laughs) go. The cell block is a two-story room with approximately 30 cells on both floors. This is in the back of the building. The front of the building contains the rooms that the warden and his family lived in along with the kitchen. There was a library on the second story of the cell block. That's crazy. I didn't even think about the warden living there. Yeah. Trust me, all of that was important to the plot of this story. We trust you, girl. Yeah, girl. So in 2004, the jail had just started doing ghost tours. They had been doing regular historic tours for as long as I can remember. So the five of us went on this tour. You go through the first floor of the front of the building and nothing is unusual in there. So we moved on to the cell block. On the first floor of the cell block, MK decided she was a bit scared and stood in front of me, so I put my arms around her. She kept wiggling, but I didn't think anything of it and just listened to the tour guide. Later on, she would tell me that the whole time it felt like someone was trying to get in between us and was pushing her out of the way. (gasps) Holy fuck. I would have been screaming, Mm -hmm. like, MK, you're more badass than I am, because, you know what? You know I'd have been screaming. She she was a fighter, too, on the fight or flight. Mm -hmm. I would have been like, peace, (laughs) go on. (laughs) My dad, Ian, and I were... Went with a tour into the basement area slash solitary confinement. It is super dark and gross and dirty down there, so you have to hold hands. At one point in this story, they turn off all the lights so you can experience what it would have been like down there for the prisoners. Mm-mm. Oh my gosh. Mm-mm. My like my heart's kind of racing right Mm-mm. now just thinking about that. Mm-mm. During this part of the tour, I was holding my dad's hand and N's hand. I felt N stiffen up and suddenly fall over like a board. Oh my god. He didn't crumble to the ground or anything, just fell over straight backwards like a statue and blacked out. Oh my god. Holy Holy fuck. That is taking light as a feather, stiff as a board to a whole new level. <laughs> oh my gosh. Could you imagine holding someone's hand and it like being dark and you just feel wow. something? Boom. Holy crap. He woke up about 30 seconds later and we were rushed out of the basement and he and I went to the kitchen where he was given some soda and candy to recover because they thought that he had fainted. The owner came to speak with us and N said that he remembered seeing someone or something in the dark rushing towards him and eventually going through him. Holy shit. Oh my God. Which is why he fell over. They tackled him basically. Holy shit. Okay. Afterwards, he wanted to continue the tour, so we met up with the group on the second floor. They took us into a small library, three and four at a time. I was in the room with my dad, MK, my stepmom, and the tour guide. Uh, The entire time I was in there, something was tickling my arm. Despite everything, like someone in a horror movie, I didn't think anything of it because it's an old building and drafty, and it could have been a spider web, etc., etc., until something grabbed me by the arm and yanked. Oh my god. fuck. It was like a kid that was like, hey, 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 (laughs) hey, not gonna pay attention to me, I'm gonna be dramatic. Oh my god. Holy crap. Oh my god, I would have pissed myself. I would. I. I. You know what? Again, I wouldn't be able to write this email because I'd be dead. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let me tell you, ladies. There are very few times in my life that I have moved that quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Same girl. <laughs> Before we left, the owners asked us to write about our experiences and for our permission to put them in the book of ghost stories they were putting together. So I'm in a book. I believe they list me as N's wife, which isn't accurate, but what are you going to do? I've included the links to both the gel and the book if you're interested. It's interesting, and if you wanted more background info for the story, it's a good place to look. Thank you for the podcast and your awesome Facebook group. I have several more stories, but we'll save them for another time. Valerie. (gasps) Oh, oh my it. gosh. Oh my gosh. That is great. How freaking scary. Where did you say this was? Pennsylvania. Okay. 
Oh, that was a good one. That was a really good one. Holy crap. It kind of reminds me there's a um an old prison in Salem, Massachusetts that they turned into apartments. Yes. That are said to be haunted too. Mm-hmm. Well, I really tried to get that apartment, like to get when I was <laughs> there for my residency and the, I could never get anybody to get back in touch with me. But anyway. The guys didn't want you there. No, they said, look. God, what the fuck? Like, why did the printer just do that? I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, my eyes are watering. That was creepy. <laughs> AF. Like, because I didn't know. I thought it was your chair at no, first, and then I it thought it was like... a truck coming by. All right, you ready for this last one? Yes. This is from Cody. Hey, Cody. Okay, so Cody says, Hi, I'm a huge fan of the show, and it's pretty much the only thing that's kept me sane through the end of my senior year. Aww. Oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, my God. And congratulations on graduating. Whoop, whoop. Okay. You're an adult. Get a job. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a story that happened to my best friend who, for safety's sake, I plan to call A. That's very pretty little liars Ooh, of pretty you. little liars. Yeah. A and her boyfriend were sitting outside in a truck with another friend. While they were getting high, none of us... <laughs> <laughs> well, this took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> none of us have ever seen anything like this before. A saw something moving around outside of the truck and went to brush it off until one of the others asked if anyone else had seen it. Oh my gosh. See, again, that's so scary. I know, because you just like reason shit out because yes. you're like, oh, it was just a, the wind or it was an animal or it was yes. whatever. Meanwhile, in Sarah's case, it actually was an animal. <laughs> and balloons. What if what it was like, why were they balloons though? Because it was it. Oh, my gosh. What's his Pennywise. Name? Pennywise. Couldn't remember his name. They all float down here. Okay. So they asked if anyone else had seen it. According to them, it looked like a dog, but it had red eyes. What? And the head of a jackal. And it seemed to have its legs on backwards. What the fuck? Meanwhile, we totally just paused to look to see what the fuck a jackal was. <laughs> looks like a fox to me. Where, where are you from, Cody? I don't know from a jackal. I'd never heard of that. No, me either. First of all, oh, well, I thought I had heard of it, but I thought it was like a mythical something. Me too. Me too. Okay. <laughs> well, I think it was in 13 Ghost. Do you remember that movie? Mm-mm. It had Tony Shalhoub in it from Monk. I, uh-uh. I mean, uh, I know who that is, but I don't know. From the... Well, I, I swear there was a jackal, but it was not a fox. I mean, it may, it may not even actually be a fox. It just looked... Anyway. It was moving too fast for a normal dog, and it was moving faster than its legs. It dis- right? It disappeared for a moment before reappearing on the porch <gasps> of the friend they were waiting on, K. And it appeared to be eating something. Oh my gosh. So the porch is like of K's house. Yeah. The letter K. A called K and told her they were leaving, to which K replied, That wasn't any of you guys in the house. Oh fuck. Oh my god. A said she then looked up towards the porch and the front door was wide open oh holy fuck cody said i have been to Kay's house before and it is not easy to get that door open so they aren't sure how it happened oh my gosh even i got a bad feeling hearing about this after i got a call late at night from a asking if i knew anything about demons since we're both wiccans a went back to Kay's house the next day and said that things still felt super off that's how she left us Okay, so Cody survived, but what about the friends? A K A K A. Oh my gosh. I, Cody, we need a follow up email. Yes. You can't leave us hanging like this. Oh my God. Like, how? Who? Hmm. Wait. Demon? Oh my gosh. Sage, get you some sage. Call Sarah. She'll send you her sage. Yes. From the basement. <laughs> no, legit, though, that does sound like a demon that, like. Yes. Went and, like, opened the door, you know? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Did it smell anyway? Because usually it's, like, sulfur or whatever. Oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. That's so creepy. You see something, and, of course, you know, like, demons do like to show themselves as something else. Hopefully, you know, they didn't get to do what they were going to do. Well, and I feel like, too, it's it's one thing, like, if one person saw it, but the fact that somebody else was like, holy shit, did you see that? And then they call... K and she's like she's had an experience wait that too. wasn't y'all in my house yes to be K 
okay in that instance would have to be the scariest because then it's like... She can't go anywhere. They can just leave in the car. Yeah. Well, and two, like, 30 seconds ago, she felt safe. Like, oh, okay, they just came in. And then to be like, oh, fuck. Mm Mm-hmm what's going on Mm -hmm. you know like oh my gosh my heart would have shot out of my ass Mm -hmm. i mean it almost did here (laughs) oh my god i did y'all these stories y'all did a good job yes them coming oh my gosh we need more uh send them a paranormal chicks at gmail.com you can go to our website, mm-hmm. aparanormalchicks.com, and you can send it through there. Oh my goodness, yes. True crime, like local true crime, uh, personal stories, weird, creepy encounters, any of your weird shit. We want to hear about that. We like that kind of stuff. Yes. So send them to us and we will read them back. Poorly, probably. And remember, creep it real and, and don't, don't get, get scared. scared.